everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be working with CBeebies magazine to share a few ways that you can entertain your kids over the half term which is obviously coming up or even just a wet and windy and rainy weekend which is quite common <laughs> where I live at this time of year or just something to do with the kids when you're stuck for some ideas. Now I like to think that all of these ideas are relatively affordable and they're not going to take you too much out of pocket and not only that they're really fun for the kids to do. I've done quite a few of them with my kids before and hopefully they're not too stressful for you to do either. So without any further ado I'm going to get started. So as I mentioned at the start of the video I am working with CBeebies magazine in this video just so you know and I've actually worked with him before before Christmas and it went down really well so hopefully you enjoy this video too. Now if you're new to the world of CBeebies magazines let me quickly show you what is included what different types you can get and then you can see which one might be right for your child. So I've got a few here to show you and the one that I'm going to start with is just the traditional CBeebies magazine. Now what I really like about it and what my kids really like about it if you're a parent I'm sure you can relate it's that it comes with little free toys to play with or activities and games and this just makes my kids so excited if I do have to do like a grocery shop during the week or I've got a nip out to buy something if they've been good and it's like the holidays or a wet and rainy weekend I will treat them to one of these and they oh, they love them and you know what's really nice about them is that they're not just a load of tat there's loads of activities in here that are really productive for your child to do. They also follow the national school curriculum so any activities that they're doing in there are also educational as well which is nice. You're tricking them into learning which is never a bad thing. So this first one here has a little shopping play set which would be something that Daisy would absolutely love. She loves role play at the moment and that's really encouraging for her. And then inside there are loads of different activities so there are things to cut out, there are things to colour, things to match up, there are little trails that you can do and my kids really really enjoy doing them they recognize all of their favorite characters so daisies for example is bing she loves a bit of bing and they're just a nice way to sit down with your kids we like to do it on the kitchen table when stan's having a nap and we'll sit down with some coloring pens and craft stuff and we will go through the magazines together and that is the first one but also another one that we have which i think that bill would really like is the art one he said to me the other day that he didn't want to be a vet anymore he was thinking about being an artist because his art is so good so I think this would be right up his street and in this one you can paint a peacock there's some little stickers there's paint there's highlighters included you can make a 3d dragon and there's loads of different ways to encourage your child if they're quite the budding artist it's a really nice way for them to like learn new skills like learn to draw certain things coloring in that kind of thing and then I just have to mention because one of Bill's favourite characters is Andy's Amazing Adventures. He's dinosaur mad at the moment and we actually went to the Natural History Museum in the summer and he actually saw Andy's clock there so he's very very happy about that. But yeah it's a fantastic little buy and obviously you've got different options there as well. And then not only are there those two but there was also this one which is the Amazing Collectors issue and this one I'm quite excited about. I'll just pop this one down for a sec. This includes number blocks so you can see here there's little stickers to decorate them with and this is perfect for counting like Bill is doing his sats this year he's in year two and I want to get a bit of extra work done in the holidays just to make sure that I can help him as much as I can with that so these are going to be fantastic and a fun way of doing it as well and then this whole issue is focused on number blocks and learning and counting and it makes it nice and fun there's loads of different activities within it that you can do with your child so in this one here we've got number blocks six seven eight nine and 10 and then in this one we have number blocks one three to five so i'll probably start with the smaller set for daisy so she can decorate them again you can see the little stickers here and we can go through some activities for her as well because she'll actually be moving up to preschool in april because she's turning three and that is where they predominantly teach them and prepare them for school so i can help her at home as well which is never a bad thing one, two, Well done! I'm passing ice. You're gonna give him some eyes. The next activity that I want to talk about is visiting a miniature railway. Now, for some of you, this might be something that you actively do anyway. We're quite lucky to have a couple nearby to us, and my kids 
absolutely love them. You can teach them about trains while they're there. They're usually situated within like garden centers and things like that. So you can always take them out for like a baby Chino and a piece of cake afterwards and really spoil them, but they're not too expensive. Bill has loved doing this ever since he was tiny. And it's actually something that me and my brother used to do when we were little as well. Uh, the exact same train track. So it's a really nice fun thing to do. And if you've never done it before, definitely worth having a search online to see if there are any miniature railways near you because it's become something that is a big treat for my kids but actually really doesn't cost us that much money at all. Next up is a really quick craft idea and it actually stems from Bill asking me the other day if we could make some paper aeroplanes and I had completely forgotten how to make them and make one that actually flies. So I had a Google and I found this website and it has loads of different ways that you can make certain planes and all you need is just some A4 paper and you can decorate the paper first so they can decorate their own planes and then you can fold it and you can have like paper aeroplane races so you could go in your back garden if the weather's not too bad or fly them down the stairs. And we did it the other day and he <laughs> absolutely loved it and so did Daisy. And it's just a really quick and easy craft and you don't need to have loads of stuff stuff in you can think on your feet and you just follow the steps and it works every time so the next two things I'm going to talk about are to do with food and you can't have half term or any time with kids without food can you because they're always hungry they always want something new and different to eat so I've got a couple of ideas up my sleeve to share with you that my kids really enjoy now the first one is a nice lunch idea and I'm going to be making mini quesadillas with you now all you will need are some tortilla wraps you can get big ones if you want I find them mini ones are quite handy because you can put them in a smaller frying pan and they're child size they're perfect size now for each child you're going to need two tortilla wraps and you're going to need a selection of fillings so you could have grated cheese as a plus really because you need that to adhere them together but we also add things like ham cucumber tomato puree if we have any chutneys left over in the fridge like a red onion chutney that's always a really nice one to add you could add chorizo anything that you have left over, any veggies that are in the veg drawer and like, you know, slowly dying, get them out, chop them up and add them. And what I like to do is lay all the ingredients in front of the kids and they can make them themselves. So all you need is one frying pan. I like to spray it with a little bit of spray oil. I add the first tortilla, we pop the fillings in, whichever ones the kids want. And then I add the second tortilla on top. And once it's toasted on the bottom, I give it a flip and taste it on the other side. And then I cut it in two triangles and the kids absolutely love them i like to serve some veggies on the side with this as well so cucumber sticks carrot sticks chopped up tomato you know sweet corn olives anything that they fancy and then if they want a bit of dip you can do that as well another alternative is also to do a bit of a sweet version if you want to try something new so you could do banana on nutella and cook it very much in the same way it's entirely up to you and you can get very creative but it's so easy and it's a really good way of using up leftovers hanging around in the fridge as well so for this next one, if I know kids, I know that they love baking and my kids definitely do. It's something that they ask me to do quite often and I'm going to leave the cupcake recipe that I normally use down in the description bar below. But a little thing that you can do that's a bit different is that once you've made your cupcakes and they have cooled, if you take off the top a bit like you would if you were making butterfly cakes and hollow them out a little bit you can make pinata cupcakes and you can fill them with their favorite sweets so that might be smarties it could be those little million sweeties you could fill them with sprinkles if you wanted to and then you pop the top back on and then cover it with frosting or icing of your choice and it's just a bit of an exciting way for them to eat a cupcake it's a bit different they bite into it and then loads of goodies fall out of the middle and it's nice as a little treat and it's a nice way to do something with your kids as well and actually most of us have a lot of baking ingredients in anyway like butter flour eggs that kind of thing and hopefully you'll be able to make these quite easily so the next activity is nature related and gets them outdoors and in the fresh air which can be a bit temperamental at this time of year in the uk but i like to do it as and when we can now this activity is one that we like to do quite a lot with our kids just to get them outdoors and it really doesn't require much money or if any money at all and we basically go on a nature treasure hunt so we will do little activities like roll down a hill find the biggest stick that you can find a really beautiful leaf and do a leaf rubbing back at home with it build a den climb a tree and then also we like to go and feed the ducks now if you want to feed the ducks the best thing to feed them are actually not bread but different mixes of things that you probably will already have at home already so you can make a little 
little duck feed mix together as well and you can use a combination of porridge oats just dried ones are fine you can add some frozen peas or some sweet corn and just mix it all up in a tub and take that with you and it's just a really really nice activity to do while you're out and about with the kids and you're teaching them about nature and you don't have to spend any money either now the next activity is one that i'm really excited about and we've never done this before but i can't wait to give it a go with the kids and i'm already getting ready for it and that is to make our very own time capsule i don't know if you can see from the glare here but i've got little stickers on here ready to go and we're going to fill it with lots of the kids favorite things i'm going to do a little questionnaire with each of them so their name the age the date things that they love at the moment their favorite song their favorite color that kind of thing and then as well as that i'm also going to add a newspaper cutting or like the front page from a newspaper on the day that we did the time capsule i'm going to write down what was number one on the day and then maybe include a few of their favorite things so maybe a pokemon card that bill already has like a duplicate of or a little lego figure and things that are really reminiscent of their childhood and then we're going to find somewhere special to hide it in our garden and then dig it up we might dig it up next year we might dig it up in five years or ten years but i think it'll be a really really nice activity to do with the kids it'll help them like learn about themselves and what they really enjoy and also introduces the concept of time and you really don't need anything fancy to do this because you've got most of the items in your house anyway i have a big kill in the jar that i'm going to use because i think it'll withstand the elements quite well but you could use a lunch box an old one that has clippable sides and a nice seal to it you could even can use an old shoe box and decorate it and instead of digging a hole in the ground and hiding it there you can put it in the loft and leave it up there to be found in a few years time and it's up to you whether or not you make this for your children and yourself to find in a few years time or even a stranger in the future who might one day own your house and dig up the garden and find it it's up to you but it is quite exciting and i've been reading loads of stories online about people that have done this and they have absolutely loved opening up the contents when they're older and reminiscing about the time when they were small so I think it's a really fun thing to do and I think it teaches them a lot as well and I think they'll really enjoy it so that is the end of this video I hope it was helpful and that you enjoyed it too and thank you to CBeebies magazine for working with me on this video as well it's always a pleasure to work with them and I'm a big fan as I'm sure you can tell but yeah have a lovely day whatever you're up to and I will hopefully see you next time bye